LGS deploy. 50 feet, seven feet per second. Touchdown, engine stop. Welcome back, New Shepard. The Lunar Lander Research Vehicle, or LLRV, was basically a big jet engine that pointed straight down with a pilot seat bolted on the front. Dubbed the Flying Bedstead, the main engine eliminated most of the vehicle's weight, simulating the moon's gravity. Smaller side-mounted thrusters provided a pretty good imitation of the real lander's handling characteristics. You steered the vehicle by tilting it. Too little and you exhausted your fuel. Too much and you'd fall out of the sky. There was no room for error, mechanical or otherwise. Most of the Apollo lunar pilots had trained in the flying bedstead. The first one to land the real thing on the moon would be a matter of luck. Any of the crews could draw the assignment, depending on how the upcoming rehearsal flights turned out. One of NASA's most experienced pilots, Neil Armstrong, had had his share of hair-raising adventures in both the X-15 rocket plane and the Gemini spacecraft. With the LEM, however, he had to learn a whole new way to fly. Armstrong activated the trainer for another landing simulation. Equipped with just enough fuel for a six-minute flight, the trainer balanced on the thrust of its jet engine like a dinner plate on a broomstick. Each moment teetered on the brink of calamity. And then a thruster failed. Armstrong tried to compensate. Armstrong pulled the ejection ring at the last possible moment. That flight is in the camera box. That flight is in the camera box. It was our pleasure to have participated in one great adventure. It's an adventure that took place not just in the month of July, but rather one that took place in the last decade. We all here and the people listening in today had the opportunity to share that adventure over its developing and unfolding in the past months and years. It's our privilege today to share with you some of the details 
of that final month of July that was certainly the highlight for the three of us of, of that decade. We're going to divert a little bit from the format of past press conferences and talk about the things that interested us most, in particular the, the uh, things that occurred on and about the moon. We will use a number of films and and slides, which most of you have already seen, and with the intent of, of pointing out some of the things that we observed on the, the spot, which may not be obvious to, to those of you who are, who are uh, looking at them here from the surf surface of Earth. flight, as you know, started promptly. And I think that was characteristic of, of all the events of the flight. The Saturn gave us one magnificent ride, both into Earth orbit and on a trajectory to the moon. Our Our memory of that actually differs little from the reports that you have all heard from, the, from those previous Saturn V flights. And, and those, the, the previous flights served us well in preparation for this flight in, in the boost as well as the, the subsequent phases. Ignition and liftoff. Max Q. Main engine cut out. Today we have with us uh, a group of students among America's best. To you, we say we have only completed a beginning. We leave you much that is undone. There are great ideas undiscovered, breakthroughs available to those who can remove one of truth's protective layers. There are places to go beyond belief. Those challenges are yours. In many fields, not the least of which is space, because there lies human destiny.